Hi, I'm Elizabeth from ArtStudioLife.com. This video tutorial is about how to paint a rose. I will also be going in-depth on how to create shapes of light and dark values to give your painting structure and a strong sense of light. Before starting, I apply a toned ground to my surface by applying a small amount of color. Then I turn to sketching out my rose on my canvas by using a small amount of paint and terpenoid. The sketch on my canvas is not meant to be completely accurate. Rather, I'm just trying to get the general architecture of my subject, as well as figure out the precise composition that I'm going for. As you start your painting and continue to work, you will be able to make easy adjustments to your rose painting where they need to be made. So if a measurement is slightly off, that's okay. You can simply paint over it and readjust. If you're not satisfied with your composition when you're done with your painting sketch, then you can simply wipe it out and create a different one. Here I simplify my sketch more by rubbing some of the lines together with a rag. Now it is time to apply the first spot of color on the rose painting. To start out, I found a simplified dark value color shape to paint at the center of the rose. It is important to not focus on details, especially in the beginning. This will detract from getting the big picture elements into the painting. I want to focus on getting a sense of light and dark right from the start. Since they already put down a dark spot of color, I turn to mixing something lighter that is right next to my dark spot. This helps to create strong contrast. I now add an even darker value to the center of my painting. Since I have dark, medium, and light values now converging together, I have a sense of light in my rose painting. It is a good promising start. Since I got those very basic and simplified value shapes in, I now work at painting some of the petals that are at the very center of the rose. Now I go beyond the center of the rose and paint in some dark petals on the outer margin. I work at paying attention to the edges of my painting right from the beginning. It is important in our learning how to paint a rose here to create soft edges where they are needed and sharp edges where they are appropriate. Sharp edges make it feel like an area is coming forward, whereas soft edges make it feel like an area is receding back in space. As I continue painting, I look at the general color and value of each petal and see how I can simplify it. For example, here I paint in a petal that has a strong dark value shape. As I mix up the colors for the rose petals of the painting, I pay most of my attention to the values of the colors. Here I add in some darker color that signifies the shadow between the petals. I also add some light pink to areas that are lighter. Now something unfortunate happens. Due to time restrictions, I was not able to complete my rose painting in one sitting. Unfortunately, the rose I was looking at, the rose I was painting from, drastically changed when I returned to my painting the next day. Perhaps the rose did not like the vase it was sitting in, but I made the decision to paint the changes I saw on the rose, and so I decided to continue on. I wiped and scraped away some areas that were no longer relevant, and started to rework my rose painting in a very similar way to how I started my painting in the first place. 
I look for simple shapes at the center of the rows. I scrape out lighter shapes with my palette knife and add in darker value shapes right at the center and also around the lighter areas. I now paint in the lighter petal areas that I scraped out earlier with some light pink color. I continue to find clear shapes within the rows by following the petals around the rows. Some petals are light while some are in shadow. The light parts of the petals are typically the top areas of the petal or the end of the petal. The darker areas of the petal are deeper inside the rows. It is not just sharp and soft edges that help to give a sense of space to a painting, but having clear values also helps to create space in a painting. So continue to pay attention to your values throughout the process of your painting. Painting roses is a lot about capturing the subtle color and value shifts that happen. Look closely and pay attention to the subtle color shifts that appear in your rows. At the same time though, don't lose the big picture elements and sense of dark and light. Now that the center part of the rose painting is more developed, I will turn my attention to painting the outer petals of the rose. I paint in some lighter parts of the rose petals while also searching for the subtle shadow changes on the rose. I also create some sharp edges by marking out some clear edge lines with darker colored paint. I paint in some dark red pink color at the upper side of the painted rose. This darker color helps to make that rose petal stand out more as it creates a sharp edge. I use the dark red pink color in a similar way in other areas around the rose painting. Making use of dark colors in this way makes rose painting appear easy as it helps you make your painting more realistic with clear edges. As I paint the outer petals on the rose, I introduce some new colors. As you go through your journey of how to paint a rose, you will notice your rose go through different stages. 
My rose I used here for my painting is at its final stage of blooming, so one of the outer petals is a yellowish color. Throughout the entire process of painting the rose, I continually search for simplified shapes, something I've mentioned a lot here. I found one simplified dark value shape on the right side of the rose. After creating a lot of simplified shapes with the flower petals, I work on developing the rose petals further by focusing on subtle color shifts that happen within the petals. Now it's time to paint the background of the rose painting. I like to paint the background and my subject both at the same time, as I am more able to make the background be part of the rose. Otherwise, the rose might run the risk of looking like a cut out flower. In addition, you can create soft edges and sharp edges more easily between the flower and the background if done at the same time, especially if the paint is still wet. The background of a painting will never be just one color, even if your background is just grey, as this one is. It will always consist of a variety of different shades of grey. Be sure to pay close attention to your background and be sensitive to what areas are lighter, darker, cooler, and warmer. Notice here how I use my finger to create a soft edge between the petal and the background. A rose cannot be painted without its leaves, so I start to paint the leaf that appears on the upper right side of the rose.
It is important to create a variety of different shades of green for rose leaves. Having clear values in your leaf will give it a sense of dimension. Now I work on the lower leaf, which is quite a bit darker than the leaf above it. Also paint the base of the blue vase that the rose is sitting in. Before completing the painting, I touch up some areas on the leaf. Now it's your turn to paint a rose. Grab yourself either a garden rose or one from the store. You can check the description below for some more helpful painting tips. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I will see you on the next video.